Welcome back to the channel, and hello to anyone new to the channel. Today is a requested video to break down on how I approach battles in Crystalline Conflict. I shall be going into as much detail as possible as the roles I play, the team compositions, and even the maps will influence how I approach enemy teams. Also, I am getting really close to 300 subscribers and would very much like to hit that before the year is over. So if you are new to the channel, consider liking and subscribing. And without further ado, let's get into it. To begin, before you can plan on how you would approach a battle, you first need to understand the role you are playing, especially if you're picking it up for the first time. For me, when trying out a new job that I want to play in Crystalline Conflict, I first give it a go in Frontline. The mode is much more chaotic and really helps you highlight your strengths and your weaknesses, and typically what you can get away with. And ultimately, trying out every other job, learning their strengths, their skills that can turn a battle, and the CC they can employ on you and your team, is probably the biggest advantage I have, and to anyone wanting to climb past the gold rank, the more more knowledge you know of other roles, the much easier your engagements will be. Take the White Mage for instance. Two of their strongest abilities is the ultimate and the ability to turn players into an imp for a short time. Their ultimate also works incorrectly. It deals a fairly decent amount of damage, with the additional being able to stun every player struck. What in fact happens is the stun goes off first, and then everyone in line of sight gets struck by the damage. A good white mage will combine this with team damage, then once you're at that critical stage where you must retreat or heal, hit you with imp, securing a free kill. So how do you go about this? Well, if possible, you want to try and bait them into using Imp early. I can often achieve this within the first fight, by hard focusing them, and in order for them to survive, they will Imp me to run. You should also be looking out for team members who are afflicted by Imp, as this will tell you the White Mage is now vulnerable and a potential kill, or at very least, will pressure them enough to leave the battle in order to heal, essentially putting your team one up in the fight. Another good example would be the Samurai. They attack slow, but hit hard. Should they dash to you or a party member, this will typically mean a bind will follow right after. Most players by now are aware of the Samurai's ability to one-shot multiple players at once, but many players struggle to predict or keep track of when their ultimate is ready. So when fighting Samurais, make sure you keep checking their limit gauge, it's shown on screen, as knowing when they have ultimate ready will often be the difference between your entire team getting wiped. Once you know they have their ult ready, you need to keep an eye on their cooldowns. Should you see this icon, this means they have Chi-10 active for 5 seconds. This is crucial to spot. For that 5 seconds, you must ignore them, deal no damage, and use no AoE damage whatsoever, because you could still accidentally hit them. After the Chi-10's 5 seconds are up, you are free to burn them. Often they will still pop their ultimate for decent damage, but as long as you didn't strike them, you will not be one-shotted. However, should you strike them and be inflicted with Kazushi, at this stage, the best thing you can do is move away from the team, or if possible, break line of sight to stop them targeting. Additionally, if you're playing Dancer or Reaper, popping their ultimates before a samurai will force them to lose control and waste the small time window they have to get their one shot off. As a samurai's ultimate targets a single player, anyone within the line of sight who is also afflicted with Kazushi will also be one shotted, which is why spreading apart is your next best option. Next, let's say you are ready for competitive. You know your character well enough, you just need practice in a true competitive setting. Well, luckily, when entering a match, there is so much information granted to you, making a game plan fairly simple. For this, I shall be using my dancer perspective. So first up is which map you get. Many players struggle to understand certain maps are better suited for certain jobs. You have the Volcanic Heart, Palestria and Cloud9. Knowing how well each job shines on what map will come with experience. Volcanic Heart is great for flanking. Palestria is also great for flanking. The map is bigger in size, so even ranged jobs can get away with this. And Cloud9 is the best map for all-out brawling. I myself have learnt for playing Dancer, Volcanic Heart map is by far the best, a complete playground for me. Whereas the map Cloud9 is much more of a struggle since the first half is more open. For my game plan, should I get Volcanic Heart or Palestria? 
while I'm playing Dancer, who has some of the best movement in PvP, granted four charges of dash for escaping. My role on these maps is clear. I want to be flanking, using the map's speed lanes to get in, and my dashes to get out. Whereas if I am on Cloud9, flanking for the most part is out of the question. The middle area is far too open, and flanking isn't possible until the first checkpoint is reached. In this scenario, my game plan would be keeping back to avoid CC and being dove, while being close enough to party members to help out should they get rushed, or to dash in to help secure a kill on a weak target. Then once further across the map, I can then shift into potential flanking. Deciding on a game plan early will benefit you greatly, and even should it fail, you can then quickly change up on how you want to engage the following battles. Now knowing how well the enemy handled your first game plan. Now that you have a game plan for your current map, next is target acquisition based on the team compositions. As a range or caster job, I check what similar jobs the other team has. I choose one to be my main focus, to either kill or force to retreat based on how beneficial the class is for their team. White mages are at the top of my list, followed by roles such as the black mage for their damage potential, and then classes such as bards and summoners, as they can be killed relatively quickly should they not pay attention. Tank roll should be the last to target, unless you see an opening granted to you by a team member in which they are greatly weakened. As a ranged roll, I typically steer clear of the melee jobs, as they hold a great advantage over ranged classes. You should also pay attention to your own team's composition. For example, should my team have a Dragoon, I like to keep an eye on them for the moment they dive in. Dragoons deal huge amounts of damage, and therefore backing them up when they dive targets increase the chance that target dies, placing your team one up in the battle. I also like to back roles such as the ninja, monk, and any tank. Good follow-up as a group will win you more battles than you lose. Additionally, I take note of team members who are likely to be dove by the enemy team. Support roles as healers, and any range job is typically at the top of the list. You should always be prepared for your team to get dove, especially in the first battle before the objective unlocks. Being ready to jump in and save team members is a must when climbing ranks as no one job can survive being swarmed, with the exception being tanks under certain scenarios. Up until this point, I have recommended having a game plan based on the map, and to use the start of the match to choose your main targets. These will help you climb, but do not fixate on your pre-made plan. Be ready to change your strategy. Your intended target may be well guarded or simply out of reach. You yourself may be the enemy team's choice of dive and need to play more defensively. Always check for weakened targets to capitalize on. But make sure you never tunnel vision or get too greedy. Stay close to either your team or your escape routes. Use the environmentals of Volcanic Heart and Cloud9 to your advantage. Never hold onto your ultimate for a job that obtains them relatively quickly. When a match begins, try to create an opening or look for openings in the first battle before the crystal can be moved. And extremely important, always keep checking the progress of the objective as this will ultimately decide which team wins. No matter what job you are, there may be moments where you must decide to push the objective or stall for time. Use your best judgement. If you feel your team is losing the fight or you can see you're a few team members down, be ready to fall back and retreat. Regrouping is much faster than dying yourself, as this causes your team staggered spawns. You will very likely run into bad players fairly often. Should they make foolish decisions, do not follow up, stick to what you know is correct, and stay relaxed. Bad players often look for others to blame. Keep helping those on your team who are trying and ignore those which are raging. Finally, the best advice I can still give is to learn other roles, even if you only main one or two. Just learn what they can do. The more you know of other jobs, the quicker you can make a split-second decision during the chaos. And there we have it, the fundamentals on things all players should focus on. There is no set rules to winning, but having a game plan per map, choosing targets best suited for you to deal with, and keeping track of cooldowns of issue classes such as the Samurai is a good start, and with time and practice, you yourself will pick up your own tricks. The less mistakes you make, the less you can be punished during a match. That's all from me for today, thanks for clicking on today's video, and I'll see you all in the next one.